uh, with this, I'd like to introduce our next session and our next uh, speaker. So this is once again an insight session, uh, and the topic for which is tools of the computer age, making finance personal. Our speaker for today who will share with us on this topic is Mr. Somendru, Somendu Shekhar Ganguly. He's the chief product officer and business head for new platforms at CAMS. Somendu Ganguly is the chief product officer, if I said, and head of technology strategy at CAMS. He spearheads all the product initiatives there and is heading the business and strategy for new platform-led businesses, including MF Central, CRA Business, and account aggregators. With this, I'd like to uh, invite Mr. Ganguly on stage and um, please share your thoughts with us. So thanks, everyone. And uh, before I go into my presentation, I thought uh, I will start the session by uh, a big round of applause for Samati for putting together this event. It's, it's a tremendous successful, tremendously successful event, the first of its kind that has happened in this country and for bringing all of us together here, the FIUs, the FIPs, the account aggregators, and these are uh, acronyms that wouldn't have been known in this industry a couple of years back in, in the financial industry. So, so great work. Uh, I'm going to talk about personal finance, and uh, this is a quote that I put up first, because usually when we think about personal finance, we think about, okay, what are the products to recommend What's the algorithm going to do? What is it going to suggest? But personal finance is not about where should one invest. It is more about the fact that what is the process to create wealth? And in that context, there are a set of facts that I would like to provide. The first is, uh, so CAMS is also the number one mutual fund RT in this country. And in the last three years, around one crore new investors have come and invested in mutual funds in this country. Out of that, around 53% of 53 lakh investors are millennials. And so mutual funds is a structured investment. You are unsure which, asset, which stocks to buy, but you want to enter into the capital markets, you enter through mutual funds. Your risk is lower, but hopefully your returns are better. Now juxtapose that fact with the fact at the bottom, which is, Seven crore new investors have come into capital markets through our new DMAT accounts have gotten open, which means that around seven crore people in this country in the last three years have tried to invest in stock or equity markets by themselves. And the interesting number in this is that around 89% of investors who invest directly into capital markets lose money. So, when we are thinking about personal finance, think about a user who is thinking that, okay, I have some money, I should get into this India growth story, I should get something out of it, let me invest in capital markets, most of these people are gonna lose money. And one crore people are coming into mutual funds, so hopefully they will make some money. And out of that again, think, look at this top number, that only 14% of mutual fund investors have invested directly. So supposedly the DIY crowd in mutual funds, the millennials, most of them are also not investing directly, but are depending on somebody for their advice to figure out where to invest, when to invest, and how much to invest. And most of these millennials have entered this mutual fund industry through SIPs, which is again a structured product to get into capital markets. So the core point that I'm talking about is that personal finance management is something that you look for to figure out where to put your money and when to put your, uh, or, and when to invest. And that, contrary to the normal belief that a lot of people are getting into capital markets, a lot of people are investing, this country is not ready yet. So the dependence on good tools to advise people to invest in the right product categories and the right asset classes is a key or a critical thing to enable this country to build wealth. Now, this slide basically talks about what are the different categories. So we have spoken about the fact that personal finance management is about figuring out when to invest and how to invest. 
But what are the different categories of customers who are seeking these personal finance management tools? There are broadly three kinds. The first kind is, is basically people who are just about to create this habit of wealth creation or get into this habit of wealth creation. They are still not disciplined investors. They are still trying to figure out that where they are spending, are they spending, can they save some money there, figure out insights around, you know, did I spend too much somewhere and how do I ensure that from the money that I have, whatever money I have, how do I disciplined, in a disciplined way, invest it to make sure that I am building wealth. The second category uh, or the middle category is basically the set of people who have started investing, who have gone or come into the journey, but they are, they are yet not very sure that are they investing right. So what is the kind of help they need? They need help in figuring out whether their portfolio is right balanced, whether they have, they have invested in the right risk basis, their risk appetite, whether they have invested in the right asset classes, the asset categories. They will like to figure out that, okay, if, uh, if, if they have bought into a long-term equity fund, whether the underlying equities, they have di taken direct exposure of that, and whether their portfolio is getting too much skewed about certain kind of companies only. So that's the second kind of category who will need insights on their portfolio. And then the third category, which is the ultra HNIs, the family offices, they would like to see everything that they have invested in across asset categories or asset classes inside or, or in a single statement where they will be able to figure out whether the investments are going right and see a consolidated view of that. So across the spectrum, there are different kinds of investors in the diff and at different journey points in their, in their investment journey, and they have different needs from their personal finance management tools. Now, in all of this, where does account aggregator come in, right? So, yeah, what are the challenges? And, and this has been spoken about again and again across different sessions today. The challenge is about, first, friction in acquiring data, right? How do you get access to all the data? And once you have gotten access to data by, by maybe scraping somebody's inboxes, figuring out, okay, get some permissions, get their PDFs in, inside my system, how do you get it repeatedly? How do you make sure that you get the access when you need it? How do you ensure that when the market is moving and your portfolio is not balanced, how do you ensure that you get this right at that time? So it's about friction in acquiring data, and getting the data at the right time. It's also about, from the investor point of, point of view, it's a breaking journey. And we are talking a lot about journey and how journey should be as smooth as possible. But today's journey is broken. You have to move from different FIPs or go to different FIPs to figure out you know, where to get the money, how to make sure that the money comes, oh, sorry, how to make sure the data comes in into the personal finance management tools, platform, and all of that. So those, that's an issue. And then the third and the critical point is data security issues. When you are sharing your data, how do you know that your data is going to be safe after the use case is done? After somebody has given you insight on where you should invest, how are you sure that your data will not be resold to somebody else and you will not get a series of unsolicited calls? And it's a big, big problem in the mutual fund markets also. We today have uh, the entire Ministry of Finance talking about nominations. And I think somebody won an award in making sure that the nominees are seeded well. But it's a problem that this industry sees, the entire financial market sees, is that there are folios and accounts after accounts without nominees. So once you give the data, you are giving your bank statements, you are giving your account statements, there are a lot of sensitive data around it, how do you ensure that the data is secure after you have shared? And that is where the entire account aggregator piece comes in. It helps solve all of these problems. It helps solve the problem of access, reduces the friction, makes sure that the data is right because you are getting it directly from the source, and the data is secure because the entire consent manager ensures that the data is purged after a given frequency, after a given point, and ensures that your data is secure with you, right? Now, given that uh, account aggregator is solving all these problems, and given that CAMS has been in the industry or in 
the business of personal finance management, helping people make the right decisions around mutual funds. We have the largest personal finance manager or tool till one point in time, the, the number one mutual fund app in the country called MyCamps. We thought it's a great opportunity to, for CAMS to come into this ecosystem as an account aggregator and as a TSP and provide the right tools to make sure that you are making or FIUs, uh, helping the FIUs make the right decisions and help them give the right nudges. So what are we doing? Uh, we are basically uh, building a complete personal finance management tool where we are, going, we are taking your consent for data across all the asset categories, which is your banks, your mutual funds, your uh, stock markets, which is the depository data, NPS, uh, all of that, and then kind of creating a profile view of yours, which tells you that how have you invested, where have you invested, again, is your exposure the right exposure, is your portfolio balanced enough, is your, uh, the asset class selection, is it the right asset class basis, your goals and your risk score? And we are giving all of this data to you and the FIU who is basically consuming our APIs to figure out that, okay, this is how I should nudge you to invest in the right asset classes at the right time. So this, this screens that you see is, is just the front end, but at the back end, this API is available to FIUs to help you figure out that what is your portfolio like? Is it, is it crafted in the right way? Is it balanced in the right way? Is it allocate, have you allocated money the right way? Uh, and then give you nudges to help you make the decision or make the right uh, investment decision. So, so uh, retirement is a great use case, right? A lot of people that we speak to find it very difficult to understand the concept of present value of money, which means that today, if you, are, if you are maintaining a lifestyle which takes five lakh rupees a month, then in 20 years, that is going to take you close to 20 lakh rupees a month. But for you to know that, and then to start investing so that after 20 years, you are at least able to get a monthly income of 20 lakh, what are the right, in, what are the right investment options? So we in the back end look at the entire mutual fund data, look at the rate of returns, look at different potential asset classes, and then the algorithm or the engine basically can help you figure out how you should invest money, where you should invest money, and so that you build the right retirement portfolio, to give one example. Or as, as, as you can see on your screen, basis your different goals, how do you allocate uh, your, your portfolio to make sure that you are hitting your goals? And uh, this has been something that I think the entire account aggregator ecosystem started with, which is looking at your bank statements, figuring out, analyzing that, and giving you insights around, you know, the entire lending journey, which is basically figuring out that, you know, whether you have, you have the right credit history, how is the money that is coming into your account, what is your uh, discretionary versus non-discretionary income, what is your FOIA ratios? How much should I lend you, to lend you? And do you have the capacity to repay or not? Our bank statement analyzer, which is our proprietary algorithm, also gives you all this input and helps you figure out. And so we are building very interesting use cases around this. One of the use cases, we are helping the mutual fund industry figure out. Uh, so one data point for you is today, the mutual fund industry does around four crore SIP, uh, SIPs every month. And out of that four crore, close to 2% of those SIP, which is around eight lakh SIPs, bounce every month. Now those bounces uh, kind of, it's cost for the mutual fund house because they are presenting and they are not getting money. It's inconvenience for the user because some of the banks will charge you bounce charges. So we are trying to solve that problem because we are looking at the bank statement, figuring out that whether you have the money to do that SIP or not, and give you a nudge that do you want to pause that SIP for this month because you may not have enough money to service that SIP this month. Don't stop your SIP, but just you know, pause it for a month and then maybe recontinue. So we have this bank statement analyzer algorithm which looks at all of this data and gives nudges and, and similar use cases that can be solved using, using our BSA. Uh, 
because it's a session, the company plug, which is why camps, right? We have, we have been in this industry for 30 years. And in terms of two things I would like you to take away from this slide. One, data security. We, we very, very strongly believe that this is extremely sensitive financial information. And it is very, very important that it is protected and it is given the respect that this data deserves. We understand this. We have a bit side score of 800, which is the highest in this country in terms of the cybersecurity posture, uh, processes to make sure that your data is protected. And the second part is just scale. CAMS today has close to you know, 680 plus terabytes of data as, as the RTA of this country. Uh, we manage close to 2 billion API hits every year. Uh, the biggest and the largest banks of this country uh, run on our API network to, to, to power their mutual fund businesses. So from just scale point of view, we are, we are amongst the biggest in this country. And from a security point of view, uh, you know, again, best in this country. So, so as an account aggregator, we bring all of this to our business of account aggregation, which is the FinServe business. And uh, we understand the responsibility that account aggregators have in this country today. Because once this euphoria of, wow, so much data, such great data is available, that euphoria dies down. It will come to this brass tacks, right? That is your data secure? Are you getting reliable support to data delivery? And are you getting the right insights to power your business? And that's where I think uh, Camps FinServe uh, really scores. That's all I had. If there are any questions? Sure. Fantastic presentation. Uh, just wanted to know what is there for consumer? The, whatever you are saying is that either for mutual fund or the industry, the banks and all. The, Consumer is more concerned about their own financial well-being and financial planning. And mostly it is not available across any platform. If, even if it's a CA, CAs also, if you go to CA, they will not be able to suggest you that this is the one uh, app or one place where you can do your own financial planning, either gold-based or whatever, you know, tenure-based. So, and neither it is available in the school curriculums or college curriculums. So, is there anything which you are thinking to build on camps? Because this is the biggest uh, platform right now being used by all consumers. Mm -hmm. But uh, financial planning-wise uh, information, how they should plan for themselves, if they have that kind of peer, um, uh, you know, who, who have planned in, in a way, uh, uh, the bracket, uh, income bracket which they falls into, uh, is there any planning of that sort uh, from the camp side? Because you have a data insights which yeah. can be, you know, delivering on this place. So, uh, I, would, I, I would say there are two parts to this question, and I will take this as two parts. I think uh, one of the best things that, that happens with account aggregator is that it was designed with keeping consumer at the center. It was not designed basis what the business will do and all of that. So, so everything is for the consumer. Uh, the consumer today, because of this data, is able to get interest rates that are customized to them, right? If I have great credit behavior, if I get a lot of money, if I have a lot of assets that I have built, built so you can see that I have great financial discipline. And I should, I should be able to get a better rate. So that's part of the lending. On the financial management part of PFMPs, what CAMS has thought uh, is that we don't have all the intelligence in the world, right? So it's about making sure that the platform is available for people to build intelligence on top of that and offer it to the customers, right? So we will do something on our own applications, which is applications like MyCamps. Uh, we have a distributed application called Edge 360, which today 70,000 of mutual fund distributors in this country use. So we will give something there. But we are also making all of this available through APIs to make sure that the other platforms are able to build on top of it. We do the base, base analysis, which means that as I said, that if you are an investor who invests in long-term funds, but you are also buying blue chip company stocks directly, it does not make sense because the, your mutual fund, fund manager is also buying the same stocks. 
the underlying equity is the same, right? So the, the, the app is going to give you a nudge that, sir, you are buying similar stocks. What right. you are saying is about my camps. I'm, I'm an avid user, that's why I'm asking this question. For, is there anything which will be available for the user to plan their finances in a better manner? Correct. So, so the idea is to give a lot of these tools on my camps and also expose this as APIs so that the rest of the financial community, the startups and all of them are able to build similar, similar solutions and offer it to the market. Hey, thanks, Omendo. Uh, this is Shreyans from Finsire. Uh, we essentially are a digital asset infrastructure uh, or digital infrastructure for assets in general, right? Uh, I do, you know, I have spoken to Anuj, I have spoken to uh, Syed as well, and, 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 and all of them had only good things to say about you because you basically kind of, you know, call the shots, I believe. Essentially, what CAMS has done for mutual funds um, and for other assets in terms of identification and holding as a repository is quite a lot, right? But India is huge in terms of asset classes. There are about 16 odd different other asset classes um, that over a period of time that have to get digitized and there's no way out to it, right? Today, CAMS has identification of those assets, uh, but over and beyond in terms of other extensions uh, with respect to, say, verification or, uh, you know, kind of uh, collateralization, pledging, de-pledging, and, uh, you know, uh, so on and so forth in terms of, uh, you know, giving out that to the, to the end user as they want it and integrating as a TSP with other sorts of players is a huge long game to be played. That technically CAMS, I believe CAMS alone cannot do it. There has to be a lot of regulators around it, a lot of TSPs around it, so on and so forth. What do you see in terms of the physical assets, the timelines, how, how do you tackle that? Uh, as a player, uh, how would you want to play that game in terms of, you know, because that actually holds a chunk of, of the asset class in India and probably it's a long game to be played, right? Uh, and then that's one. Two is that how do you see a TSP, because I do believe CAMS in general in terms of holding as a repository is brilliant because, you know, you've been in the market for long, you know Sir, the regulations. I'm a lot sorry better. to interrupt you. Can you keep your question a little brief, please? So I'm sorry, I'm going to keep it very brief from now. Uh, <laughs> second you. is how do you want the TSPs to play around it? That's about it. Okay. So, the first part is a very difficult question to answer, right? Because we don't know. We don't know how the regulatory space is going to evolve around digitizing the physical assets, right? I think CAMS, uh, and I would also say KFIN, uh, us coming together in MF Central and offering digital lean marking solutions is a good step because a lot of that process, so you would see that a lot of work that the, both the RTAs have done in the mutual fund space is about digitizing processes. But we have not really digitized assets. Uh, it's a little outside the remit. And as you rightly said, right, that the regulator has to figure out what to do, how to do. And uh, I think I'm part of this uh, innovation committee in SEBI, which talks about fractional shares now, and it's going to come in some time. I mean, at least there are conversations around that. So I think the regulator is very forward looking. They are thinking about all of these things that you are talking. Uh, and when it happens, we will surely have a role to play. But how will this pan out today? It's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, on the TSP part, uh, we, as, as I said, and we initially, we were the second account aggregator to get the license, right? And we wanted to play this space in the account aggregator space. But what we realized later is that why we got into TSP and Findut, which is our TSP, we got into the TSP space because we realized that this is extremely critical and sensitive data. It is important that this data is managed rightly. And it is important that while everything else which is important, which is making sure that you have the right analysis, you have ease of access, ease of usability, and all of that, but you also need to build it for India's scale. And you need to build it so that the security is at the core of the design. So we, and that's why we thought we should be a TSP because we should manage this space. I think as, as a TSP uh, in, this, in this ecosystem, it is, and speaking on behalf of the TSP community, it is imperative that we understand this responsibility very, very well. And we build it so that, you know, it is built right, right at the beginning. So that once it scales, we, we are modeled right, we are designed right, to ensure that it really scales rather than get going through a hiccup cycle. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Samindu. Thanks. Thanks for the time.